Hello Cornerstone. I would like to join with my brothers and sisters in this devotion and scripture that I will be sharing. First, welcome to my home. I truly want to say that I miss and love you guys so, so much. My name is Marilyn Carasquillo. My husband is Raul. And we are deacons at the church at Cornerstone Christian Center. And I would like to say that um, as I begin to share that your hearts will be open and prepared and ready to just receive. Uh, not from me, but from the Lord. I'd like to begin. I would like to say that simply, prayer is a powerful way to join the fight in this spiritual battle. If you're not sure where to start, there's good news. God intended it to be as easy as talking to a friend. He doesn't care how we say our prayers. He just wants us to talk to him. In fact, if God has his way, we would pray without ceasing throughout the day. It doesn't necessarily mean praying long prayers, one right after the other. It simply means that in every moment, with every breath, we have the opportunity to intentionally acknowledge God's presence and invite him in our thoughts so that we can be more open and in tune with what he is saying. And as uh, I prepared this, I just know that um, I was nervous and I just wanted to be used by him. Um, I am drawing nearer and nearer to him and I miss everyone, but I do know that he is drawing me closer to him and, and I'm thankful and I'm grateful for him because his mercies, they're new every day, every morning. And we have to take advantage of that while we can. He's a merciful father and he gave us an opportunity once again to, to draw near to him. He says here in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My brothers and sisters, just as uh, pastor said on Sunday, um, all we need to do is just do what is right and just. And in our obedience, it's more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. I would like to prepare by stating uh, the scripture that um, my devotion will be about and it is in Ephesians 6 10 through 20 it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against the principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and in having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your lions girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utters, utterance, utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And I'm gonna move forward into my devotional which it states here, almost every little boy loves playing cowboys and Indians. However, kids pretending to fight in the wild west is quite different from real warfare. And, and real weapons. Take, for example, the frontier practice of staging surprise assaults using flaming arrows. This tactical strategy caught the other side off guard. Flaming arrows would start a fire on a canvas covered wagon, disrupting military lines and causing the occupants to focus on the blaze rather than the attacking enemy. 
flaming arrows were not primarily meant to kill or destroy. They were meant to distract. I say to you, your enemy wants to distract you, my brothers and sisters, so he can blindside you and, li and listen to me. He is not indiscriminately shooting these arrows of his. <laughs> he is tailored in his strategy. He studied your tendencies and habits, your deepest fears and your weaknesses, and has aimed at those areas in particular. He knows he can't destroy you. You're eternally secure in Jesus. But he fully intends to sidetrack your attention by setting any number of internal fires ablaze in your in your life just like insecurity intimidation anxiety worry or busyness just to keep you busy keep you distracted he wants you to be unfocused while he sneaks up from behind listen in Ephesians 6 Paul conveys the belt breastplate and shoes as a spiritual uniform that should be worn by believers at all times minute by minute day by day but with the shield of faith he commands for it to be taken up look at it this way a nurse might wear scrubs every day to work because it's her uniform but when the need arises she will pick up her stethoscope blood pressure machine or any number of tools to use on her patient Likewise, we must always wear our daily divinely given uniform, but also be prepared to take it up the others, take it up the others when required. When I place my uniform on me and I'm preparing for work, I know that as I put on the armor that it will give me it will bring back remembrance unto me that being prepared is very important. I just would like to say, don't miss the irony here. The enemy sends flaming arrows into your life specifically when you are being called to walk in faith. Those arrows are deliberately intended to disable you from doing the one thing that has the power to extinguish them. And that is walking in faith. Faith causes the fiery arrows to fizzle. What is God asking you to do? Do it in faith. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I pray today that you have heard and um, understood the preparation in how important it is to pray and how to place the armor. I wanted to come on and encourage you and just tell you that God is, is faithful and he is just, and he is faithful to complete the work that he has begun in you. Be prepared and ready for battle as you go out into the streets or to the stores or to work, no matter where you are. Be prepared to be able to reach out to someone that may be hurting. I love you, I miss you, God bless you, and let me pray. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, and I beseech you on this day, Father God, and I ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that your presence would be made known, that your anointing will fall fresh, Father God. I lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ, Father God. I lift up those that are unsaved. I lift up those that, Father God, are in need of you, my God, that are hurting, Father God, from either a loss, Father God, or from an illness, Father, or from uh, just not even knowing you, my God. I pray for those unsaved people that need a touch from you, my God. I just love you and I thank you and I praise you, Father God, because you are you're an awesome God. You are just an awesome God and I love you. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. And I was pleased to be able to be here, to be able to break bread with you. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.